Okay, good evening. Welcome to Math for Kids number 63. 63. <laughs> this week we're going to do a really special week about, and we're going to learn about something really complicated. Okay, no, called, second, second graders don't get to learn about it. It's called Pell's equation. Okay, so away from Away from what we usually do in the videos, we've been learning a little bit about solving equations with variables like x plus 4 equals 7. Okay? So how do you solve this equation? Well, in this equation... What do you do? You do 7 minus 4. Right. So you do x plus 4, and then you subtract 4 from both sides, and you do 7 minus 4, so you get x equals 3. Right? Thanks. Um, Whoops. Pell's equation is something a little bit more complicated, but since we're starting to learn about these, I thought I'd show you like something really neat in where this all ends up going, that you don't usually get to see this kind of stuff in school. Okay? Pell's equation is this. You ready? Yeah. We're going to look at something like x squared minus 7 times y squared equals 1. Oh. Do you need to know about the square roots to do this? You do need to know about square roots to do this. So I'm going to explain what square roots are, and then we're going to go and solve this. And the way you solve equations like this is you're using continued fractions. Awesome. Right? I like continued So before, remember we had this equation, x plus, what was it, x plus 4 equals 7? Yeah. Okay, it's not too hard to sit around and think, like, well, what, what, what would be the solution to this equation? Well, we know... Whatever, it's some number plus 4 equals 7, and we know that 3 plus 4 equals 7, so that, that probably works. And I can make these a little bit harder, like they do in your book, and they can say, like, you know, x, x minus 2 thirds equals 4 tenths, or something like that. Right. You want to give me a new marker? Yeah, that one okay. is running out of ink. Okay, but anyway, but, but th those equations don't, aren't too hard, and that, but it's a, you have to start somewhere. This equation's hard. It's like, how are we going to even think about this? Yeah. Okay? So the first thing we have to understand in thinking about this equation is we have to understand what square roots are. Okay? You want to talk about square roots for a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so square roots of a number... Square roots. We have a number, say 2 squared equals 4, and so we write that 2 equals the square root of 4. Okay? So remember how we learned about subtraction was addition backwards and division is multiplication backwards? Yeah. Square roots are doing squares backwards. So if 2 squared equals 4, that means 4 or 2 equals, and you ready for the symbol? Yeah. 2 equals the square root of 4. It looks like a law of view with a long line up on the top. It does kind of look like a good It almost view looks like a long division sign. It does kind of look like a long division sign. Just this little tail. Yeah, that's the square root symbol. Mm. Also, by the way, you remember that minus 2 times minus 2 is 4? So minus 2 is also the square root of 4. Usually when we talk about square roots, we only mean the positive ones. But sometimes you mean the negative ones. Or I wrote minus 2 squared is the square root of 4. I meant minus 2 is also the square root of 4. Okay, so we know about this, but what about a number, what's the square root of 3? Hmm. Prime. 3 is prime. Well, we know that 1 squared is 1, and we know that 2 squared is 4, right? So there, there must be some number between let's try 1 and half. 2. Well, let's look. What, 1 and a half, you mean? Yeah. So 3 halves squared, which is 9 fourths, which is 9 fourths is 2 and 1 fourth, right? Yeah. Okay, so 3 half squared is, is a little bit bigger than 2, but it's definitely less than 3. So it's bigger than 2, so the square root of 2 is less than 3 halves, and the square root of 3 is bigger than 3 halves. Now we could try something bigger than 3 halves, let's say maybe 5 thirds. What's 5 thirds squared? It's 9 tenths. 
No, it's 25 nines. It's 25 nines. Whoops. 25 nines, which is 2 plus, well, 7 nines, because 2 is 18 nines. Yeah. So now we're getting pretty close to 3. So maybe the square root of 3 sort of looks like 5 squared. 5 thirds squared, I mean. Or, sorry. Blech. The square root of 3 maybe sort of looks like 5 thirds, but it's got to be a little bit bigger than 5 thirds. Now, these numbers are hard to figure out, actually. And you can try guessing, but in fact, if we just kept guessing fractions, we would never get there. They're, they're a different kind of number than you've ever learned about before. What is the number? It, uh, sometimes square roots are... Remember, fractions and integers, so like 3 halves and 5 thirds and 2 and that. These are called rational numbers. And that just means they're numbers you can make out of integers. Okay? Sometimes square roots, like the square root of 3, is an irrational number. So that means that there are no fractions that equal the square root of 3. It's kind of like, kind of like pi. Hmm. There's no fractions that equal pi. I wonder what the square root of pi is. I don't know. But one day we're going to be studying the square root of pi. What do you think about that? Awesome. That will be awesome. Okay, so we're going to learn, so this week we're going to talk a little bit about square roots. We're going to talk a little bit about Pell's equation, and we're going to talk a little bit about continued fractions. But right now I just want to show you an example, and I'm not going to explain why. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you that this is true, and we're going to see how, how, how well, no, I'm going to explain it over the course of the week, but I just want to show you something really neat, okay? Okay, so we have, in our equation that I made up, x squared minus 7y squared equals 1, we're going to need to know what the square root of 7 equals. Okay. Now, we can play around like we've played around before with, with a bunch of different numbers. Yeah. And we can, we can try to find fractions that equal the square root of 7, but we never will. But it turns out that we can write down a continued fraction that equals the square root of 7. And you want to know what it is? What? It's 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 1 dot dot dot. And now it starts repeating. Now there's going to be, after this, back up just a little. After this, there's going to be three ones and then a 4, and then three ones and then a 4. And it's going to repeat forever. Can you believe that? Oh, so the 2 is only at, yeah. The 2 is only right at the beginning. So it goes 2, 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 1, 4, and it goes forever. It's infinitely long. Infinity. But it's interesting because it's really simple. Just 1, 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, 1, 1, 4. And now we're going to use our little continued fraction machine to find fractions that approximate the square root of 7. Do you remember our continued fraction machine, how it works? We have to draw the big box. Right, we draw a big box. So, we're going we're gonna to do our 1, 0, and 0, oops, 0, 1. Then we're going to write our numbers across the top. 2, 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 1, 4. Okay? Are you ready? Oops. Need a little bit of room. Okay, we're gonna draw like this. Yeah. Okay, uh, I probably should have made this bigger. Oh well. Two times one plus zero is two. Two times zero plus one is one. One times two plus one is three. One times one plus zero is one. One times three plus two is. One times one plus two is plus one. One times one plus one is two. Two. This, this sort of looks sort of like the Fibonacci. It does sort of look like the Fibonacci, but it'll, that pattern will break in a minute. One times five plus three is eight. One times two plus one is three. Three. Still looking Fibonacci. Mm -hmm. Four times eight is. Times eight is thirty-two. Plus five is. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Not Fibonacci anymore. 4 times 3 is? Is 
12. Plus 2 is? It's 15. 14. 14. And there okay. goes the Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so no longer Fibonacci. But I want to keep going for just a little bit because all it's, all it's one time. 1 times 37 plus 8 is 45. 1 times 14 plus 3 is 17. 1 times 45 plus 37. Do you know what 45 plus 37 is? Well, it's going to be 70 plus 2. It's going to be 82. 82. 1 times 17 plus 14 is? 17 plus 14 is going to be 31. 31. Okay. And 1 times 82 plus 45. What's that? If 82 plus 45 is 127. 127. And then 1 times 31 plus 17. It's going to be 48. 48. Okay. Now, here's, the mag here's another magic thing about continued fractions. Okay. Whenever this fraction, whenever our expansion starts repeating, right before it starts <coughs> repeating, and I'll explain what that means. It really starts repeating at the 4. We could pretend it started repeating at the 4. That's where you can see how the 4s yeah. come. Right before it starts repeating, these numbers solve our equation. So let's look. The top one's going to be x, the bottom one's going to be y. What's 8 squared? It's going to be 64. What's 3 squared? 9. So what is 7 times 3 squared? It's 63. 63. So 64 minus 63 is? 1. Whoa! 1. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Come on over here. Okay, so you, we just found that 8 squared is 64 and minus 7 times 3 squared is 63. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that tells us that 8 and 3 solve this equation. Now, the next solution to the equation is where it starts repeating again. So right before that 4, which is 127 and 48. So we need to compute 127 squared and 7 times 48 squared, okay? But doing this by hand is, is kind of tricky and you can make mistakes. So I'm just going to tell you that 127 times 127 with my handy dandy little calculator here is 16, 129, or 16, yeah, 16,129. And you can multiply that out for yourself if you want, but it does take a little bit of time, right? Yeah. Okay, and 48 squared, so we have to compute 7 times 48, times 48 is 2,304. Okay, and 7 times 2,304, are you ready for this? 7 times 2,304 is 16,128. So 127 squared minus 7 times 48 squared is 1. It solves our equation. So you get lots of solutions to these equations. And then if we wanted to keep going with this continued fraction, remember it keeps repeating, so it's not too hard to compute what the next one was. But they're going to get big quick. So 8 and yeah. 3 solve it, 127 and 48 solve it, and there's some mystery number after this that solves it too. And it keeps going. Actually, there's infinitely many solutions. They just keep getting big really quick. So this is going to be, I think, a really fun week, learning how to solve these super complicated equations. Okay. <laughs> But at the same time, we're going to be working on learning about our easier equations. But this, I just wanted to show you where you know where you can go with this algebra. Okay. You excited? Awesome. You excited? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Turn off. Go ahead. Turn off.